Many Qualcomm customers, including LG, Nokia, even Apple, have reported disappointing phone sales for the fourth quarter. I asked CEO Paul Jacobs how that's being reflected in Qualcomm numbers. What's nice about our business is really balanced right now. So we have a lot of customers, uh, over 50 customers. We sell into a lot of different geographies. So for example, last quarter, the smartphone market in China got really hot. So what that does is it allows us to sort of balance. Some people may do better, some people may do worse, but we're able to sort of ride that wave because we have so many different customers in so many different geographies. Now, is that any different in the short term versus the long term, given what's happening in the wider economy right now? Uh, you know, we are cautious about uh, what's going on in the bigger economy. Um, you know, if we look what we did relative to our strat planning to what we did when we got to guidance, yeah, we saw the uh, estimates of the economy deteriorate a little bit, and we took our numbers down when we did that. But still, you can see that we have very strong guidance because really there is this, you know, strong demand for wireless. And we have seen in the past that wireless isn't necessarily a luxury item, that people buy it even in economic downturns. Qualcomm was clearly a winner with the Verizon iPhone. What kind of momentum are you guys gaining from that versus the competition? Uh, well, we definitely feel like we are uh, uh, selling more chips at a faster pace than our competition, and that's across a broad range of technologies. We're also really leading in the technology race, too. We have a new chip coming out next year that's got all of the different radio technologies, including the most advanced ones out there. Uh, the best microprocessor technology, new graphics, new connectivity. And we have now on our Snapdragon uh, designs, which is our, our really integrated uh, mobile chip, we've got 300 devices that are already announced and 350 that are in the pipeline under development right now. All right, let's dig deeper into some of the geographic trends you were mentioning. We're hearing that demand is weaker in the U.S. and Europe, but stronger in developing countries, especially in South America and parts of Asia. Are you seeing that? It's definitely true that uh, Asia is quite strong. Latin America's coming on. That's a transition story from 2G to 3G. Uh, Europe, we definitely think, is going to be a little bit weaker. Obviously, we're all watching the news over there to see what, what happens. U.S. continues to be pretty good for us. Uh, there still is strong demand for smartphones. People seem to be very, very excited by mobile broadband and the wireless Internet. And so that continues to do pretty well. And then you see interesting things like AT&T saying that half of their net ads came from non-handset devices. So we're getting these new types of devices coming onto the market as well, and that's opening up opportunity. Now, presumably, the average price of a smartphone is cheaper in developing countries. How does that impact your bottom line? That's actually good because there's so much price elasticity, meaning that as the price goes down, more people are able to buy it. And if you look at what used to happen in an emerging market, take India as an example, people were buying a $20 phone. Now they're stepping up and buying maybe a $100 smartphone. So that opportunity to get some people onto those higher end phones, and also as we drive the prices down, a broader and broader base of those people can get access to the phones, that actually helps the business. And so there always is this uh, tension between the mix and, uh, and the pricing when you look at averages. But really the thing to look at is the fact that the whole market's just growing. Okay, talking about tablets, apart from the iPad, which Qualcomm's uh, Snapdragon processor is not in, why do you think other tablets out there aren't having similar success? And will you continue to pursue the tablet market? Yeah, I think uh, Apple's done a spectacular job in marketing the iPad. It uh, got a lot of momentum and sort of became the de facto for people. There are some really interesting new tablets coming out, some that have LTE and advanced uh, wireless technology in it. We'll see whether that makes a difference. And then we also are looking forward to the uh, launch of Windows 8, so the big windows on tablets, but adapted to touch and uh, really nice experience. That will have you know, full flash, full web, uh, full office compatibility. So we're excited about that opportunity, and we're investing in it right now. It's not a revenue opportunity in a big way for fiscal 12 for us, but we're still putting a lot of investment because we believe in that market.